LED Christmas lights, not just any old LED Christmas lights, but industrial LED Christmas lights. How very appropriate for this channel. If you think of, say for instance, home Christmas lights, outdoors in the garden, you think of stuff like this. These are, this is a low voltage set, not the dangerous Chinese high voltage set. But this is a typical low voltage set. And MD who's used these in the garden will know that uh, if, it, if it's a particularly wet season, the water wicks up into the heat shrink, because all these are, it's an LED, a spacer, the wire's soldered onto the LED on either side of that spacer, and then a bit of heat shrink over it. And it kind of makes it fairly resilient, but water does wick up inside. When it does wick up inside, it goes brown and rusty inside. And when it does that, it after a bit of time, sections of the LEDs will fail. And they're kind of like, you'd almost think they're designed to fail. They fail, you throw them out, you buy new ones. Welcome to the Christmas light industry, it's very profitable. However, these ones last a lot longer. Well, they usually last a lot longer. You get good ones, you get bad ones. You get the... Uh, some suppliers, uh, particularly in the early days, supplied white sets that would fade so badly over one season that ultimately you had to replace them after one season. But nowadays it's a lot better, and typically these will last five years or more, maybe 10 years actually, they, they last a long time because they're super rugged. And the reason they're rugged is because instead of having uh, those bare LEDs uh, where the water can wick up inside, these ones use little sleeves. Uh, hold on, I can show you that. I can show you that. They use a plastic sleeve with the LED pushed into it. And uh, if there's a resistor needed, the resistor is just soldered on. Uh, if there's uh, multiple connections going, they'll have a spacer between them. Uh, but the, the main thing is that they use a heavy rubber cable. They use this plastic sleeve. They put resin into it. Now, I'm wondering if it's ultraviolet curing resin or if it's just time curing resin. Not sure. Very messy. The factors must be a complete joy to work in. But they push the LEDs into these housings. It displaces the resin up, that makes it completely waterproof, and it also encapsulates the wires and actually acts as a strain relief. Then they cover it in heat shrink, and it ends up these little caps. They look quite good. Things worthy of note. In the early days, they just had it was just basically domed, and the LEDs were originally the standards of domestic LEDs with the, the concave lens in the end that sort of splatters the light out in all directions. And there's a problem with the curved dome over the end because when they potted it, it did catch a little bubble of air, usually in the end, but it meant it was still very directional. The light tended to shine out the end. So laterally, with these ones, the, the plastic cup actually has a slightly concave lens again so that even when you plunge the LED into the resin, it still gives that sort of wide angle effect that you can see the LED from all directions. The cable it's made of is rubber. The flex is normally called something like H05 or H07. Typically, the main wiring for these trees and things like that will be uh, H07. But in this case, it's H05, which is rated for a lower voltage. It means it's a thinner cable. It's a, it's the, the voltage rating uh, really determines the thickness of the rubber. And this is rubber. It's a TRS, tough rubber sheath, as they say. And H05 is fine for these. It's a, it's a rugged cable. It's extremely abrasion resistant and also it's ultraviolet resistant. So it's ideal for outdoor use. When you get these lights, they typically... Uh, well, tell you what, let's, before I go there, let's take a look at the, the hoppy here with its slightly flickery display. Note the fairly reasonable power factor, which is typically hovering about 0.888. That's rather convenient. But the most important thing to note here is 15 milliamps at 248 volts. 250 volts, almost quarter of a thousand volts. Excellent. I shall finger these lights at quarter of a thousand volts. Uh, they're perfectly safe. That's one of the, the main advantages of these. But the 15 milliamps is important. Let's bring in another set. I shall unplug this set and bring in another 100 LED set in warm white. And you'll notice the current is double. The current in this instance is about 30 milliamps and the power factor is even better, it's 0.9, which uh, sounds great, but it's actually down to the fact that it's using resistors to actually limit the current through this. 
But the main thing to note here is that uh, this 100 LED set of Wormway LEDs is actually two sets of 50. And each of them draws 15 milliamps, or each of them, should I say, passes 15 milliamps. And the power is typically about 3.5 watts per section of 50 LEDs. Or in the case of that coloured set that I had there, it's 3.5 watts the full 100 LEDs. I shall put the hoppy out the way now that we know that 15 milliamp thing because it's quite important. The reason for the 15 milliamps is that if you have a standard uh, 3 or 5 millimetre LED, in the case of these ones it's 3 millimetre LEDs potted into the resin, but uh, if you have the standard LED it's typically rated about 20 milliamps. By underrunning it at 15 milliamps it gives a voltage tolerance on the circuit and it also means the LEDs are, going to, LEDs are going to last a lot longer and that's kind of important particularly with the uh, colours like the green, blue and white where it's the modern gallium nitride technology that tends to degrade quite quickly and also there's phosphor involved and if you overdrive them it tends to burn the phosphor out faster and the, the LEDs go dim and they colour shift. So uh, here is a, a typical set as received in huge boxes in the UK when you're doing municipal trees. The sets come with a power cable. Sometimes you can just buy the sets without this, just on their own, like this. Basically just a plug and a socket on both ends. Usually, though, you get them with the full set, with the rectifier as well. Let me show you the rectifier. Let me take this cover off. So this cable has the plug, then it has a inline rectifier, and then it goes to LEDs. The rectifier inside this slug of plastic, it's moulded around it, is typically one of these. You might recognise this, recognize this as a classic a 4 amp rectifier. It's a very rugged rectifier. They only tend to rate them at 2 amps though. But that's ample for this application. That's possibly just to keep the heat down because it is basically encapsulated in plastic and they don't want to get it too hot. Because a typical 4 amp rectifier at 4 amps will actually dissipate quite a lot of heat. But what they do is they, they'll often fold the leads back. Say, for instance, these two middle ones are the AC leads into the rectifier and the two outer ones, the long one is the positive and the short one is the negative. So they'll fold those back and they'll solder the wires on and then the output, they'll just cut, cut, cut these short and they'll solder cables onto these two. And then they'll put it in a jig with the cables attached to it. And it clamps it in position and then it squirts in molten plastic around it. And when it sets, you end up with a very, very rugged and waterproof rectifier. When you get these, if you ever work in municipal lighting, because these strings can be joined together, you can actually join 50 sets of these together, which is ridiculous because uh, it's typically about 100 LEDs per set. So you're talking about 5,000 LEDs off just one cable. And even then, it's only at about 2 amps. But... Uh, when you get these, you'll get loads of plugs, you'll get the rectifiers, but you don't need them because when you actually, you'll need one of the rectifiers and then you join loads of strings together, but keep the rectifiers because the thing that's most likely to fail in these strings, apart from the wind damage breaking the actual strings, is the rectifiers. If anything ever gets damaged and short-circuited in your string, it will blow up the rectifier, it will go short-circuit, and it will just keep blowing the fuse. It's important to keep these. Just throw them into a big box or a bucket or something, because uh, you will uh, inevitably need spare rectifiers. It's worth noting they go so decisively short-circuit that if you get a meter... Hold on, I, I shall demonstrate. If you get a meter and you connect, you put it to continuity, so that the, uh, when you touch the probes together, it goes beep to show continuity. When you actually connect it to a dead one, it'll actually literally show a dead short circuit. It'll be like that. And that it's, it's very, it makes it very easy to diagnose faults in these things. That's the same with the LED rope light as well. But typically, the 24 volt ones, they're, they're similar. They either have the transformer and the inbuilt, the inline rectifier, or uh, in some cases they'll have an electronic power supply that puts out DC and then you don't need the rectifier. It basically goes straight to the set. 
Typically speaking, the 24 volt ones are used at low level where kids could touch them and the mains voltage ones are tend to be used up in trees. But unfortunately, with the degrading of, shall we say, quality of contractors these days, a lot of stuff at ground level is being run at 240 volts in the UK. And uh, that's unfortunate because uh, if kids do go up and touch the lights and there's faulty, if there's ca damaged cables, the fact it's rectified can often defeat uh, standard uh, AC detecting RCDs or GFCIs. It's worth mentioning that, that uh, don't let your kids touch municipal Christmas lights is what I'm seeing here. So let's take a look at the construction of these, how they're actually made. And to do that, I have already dismembered some sets. Let's start with a set of the warm white ones. Now I've plugged this in so you can see it lit because it looks nicer. It's, it's also nicer to handle when it's lit just because it looks nice. That's just weird, but it's how it is. When you're working in warehouses, working these things, actually putting them in frames and things like that, you're not supposed to do it the power on for safety just in case they wear bare wires, but ultimately it, it's just nicer to actually work with them on, ultimately. So typically what we have here is two sets in series. So there's 50 LEDs in each set. I'm just trying to find the I'm trying to find the, the joining bit here. I'm trying to find the midpoint of this set. I am not finding it. There it is. Notice that most of the set has three wires. You've got the plus volts, in this case about plus 240 volt RMS, uh, negative, and uh, you've got the series wire that actually loops through the LEDs. So that at most LED positions, you've just got a wire going in and then coming back out again. You've got the other two common bus wires going past. In this case, because this set is divided into sections, it's got the three wires running up to here, but when it jumps from one section to the next, you'll find it, it drops down to two wires. I can show you that as a little doodle on a notepad here. So what we have is the mains come in here. It goes through the bridge rectifier that's in that sealed plastic glob. And then it's got the two rails. It's got the plus volts and the minus volts at high voltage. And that goes right along the set. And then it goes to the socket at the other end. So what's actually available at the socket at the other end isn't AC. It's actually DC, but uh, unsmooth. It's fairly choppy. And that's why there's also a slight flicker with these. But what we have here is we have those two wires going along, plus we have the LED sections. And at one end, it connects to the say positive. It runs through a series of LEDs and resistors. The resistors are there to balance the, uh, the combined voltage LEDs plus the uh, current limiting uh, to match the sort of the, the, the rectified AC voltage. And then it goes through that string and then it goes on to the negative. And then either it goes on to the next section in that same string or it goes to the socket and you can cascade them end to end. Let me demonstrate that. But before I do that, I'll mention that the resistors in all these sets are little eighth watt resistors and they're rated 680 ohms. And if you calculate the 15 milliamps, it drops about 10 volts across each. Uh, which gives approximately 150 milliwatts. That's the eighth watt thing. So they are using them. I, I wouldn't, I'm not surprised about this because it's municipal lights. It's proper, properly rated lights. They are using them at the correct rating. 3.5 watts per section. 50 by well, let me let me describe these. In these sections, we've got 50 white LEDs, and if you work it out at 3 volts per LED, that adds up to 150 volts, but that leaves about 100 volts left over to drop. So what they have in these sets is they've got 10 680 ohm resistors, and they drop about 100 volts. So that's why we get such a great power factor, but it's actually a bit inefficient because a lot of power is being dissipated. Almost half the power is just being dissipated as heat, which also has advantages particularly in rope light, for melting ice and things like that and stopping frames getting too heavy. If we take a look at where the supply comes into this light, I've taken the heat shrink off these. And the first thing we see is that this one uh, doesn't have any resistors, but it has a big white plastic spacer in it because that's used where you've got multiple uh, big cables going in uh, at the start of a circuit. So this one's actually got three wires going into it. 
And they've used that spacer to keep those wires apart, they've soldered them onto an LED, and then they've plunged the whole lot into this pot, and ooze, the resin has oozed around it. But for the next ten caps, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, tangling up here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they all have those little resistors in them. Now you're going to see this. I've already shown you that, but let's zoom in on this and you can see the little resistor there, which has the colour code blue, grey, brown. Uh, six, eight, and brown means a, a multiplier of one at the end and, and a digit zero at the end, so that's 680 ohms in those. And then beyond that, after you've gone past the tenth one, it then just reverts back to a uh, no resistor and just the wires uh, hooked through the LEDs. So really it's just the first 10 LEDs in this set are using those buffer resistors and each of those is dropping about 10 volts and that. So over the first 10 LEDs it's dropping the 100 volts and then the rest of the 50 it's uh, making up the, the 150 volts that totals the 250 volts. And that happens as soon as it goes past that section of the string that it goes into the next set you've got that little white spacer again for the wires going in, and then you've got the resistor in the next one, and you can actually feel it. There's a little bit of warmth in them, and the thermal imaging camera shows this up as well. You can actually see which uh, LEDs have the resistors in them. It gets to the end, and you've got basically that high voltage DC out, and if I get another set up here, if I get another set that was still bundled up, and I remove the plug and rectifier and I plug it into the end of that one and it's fortunate the Christmas lighting industry has kind of standardised but I can plug this in making sure the polarity is right there's a little keying system to make sure it is you plug it in and uh, the next section light and keep in mind that because you can connect effectively 5,000 LEDs uh, it means that if you're decorating trees, you can actually cascade quite a lot end to end. I'm not a huge fan of doing it too much. Some companies just basically run as many as they can, which means that if you get a short circuit somewhere, if something gets damaged, water gets into a connector, can actually blow out a whole tree. But they seem to have standardised enough that uh, even incompatible, well, theoretically incompatible brands, if I bring up, say... this set of coloured icicle lights and I remove the DC lead off that and plug it into the end of the other one. This is where I make a dick of myself when it blows up. But theoretically if they're standard they should all light and you know it's just basically it's using a high voltage DC bus along all the LEDs which is very convenient. Very convenient indeed. I should put these out of the way again. So, I've shown that these ones are divided. It's 100 LEDs, but because they're all typically about 3 volt LEDs, oh, I've really tangled this up now. Because it's 100 LEDs, if they, because they're 3 volt LEDs, they're the sort of gallium nitride ones with the white phosphor, 100 LEDs would add up to 300 volts. Uh, and that would make it, it would be very, very flickery. It would light, you could use low value resistors, but it would be very, very flickery. So that's why they divide it into two sections of 50 LEDs. But the colourful set that I'm just going to bring up here is very different. So I'll unplug these ones. I shall bring up a coloured set that I've kind of uh, unravelled. So this is an icicle set. Bit of uh, sticky packaging tape there. And I'll plug this in. And I don't know, is it, are they going to look flickery? Not really. That's pretty good. Uh, but these ones will have a slightly higher flicker because these ones are wired differently. These ones uh, have sections. So you've got a, a blue icicle with just three LEDs. You've got a yellow icicle with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven LEDs. You've got a green icicle with uh, four LEDs. And notice I've taken the heat shrink off the end of this one. There's a reason for that. And then you've got the red icicle with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six LEDs. And you think, why didn't, why didn't they just make them all, you know, is there a reason they're using X number of LEDs? 
uh, in a particular manner. And there is. There are five sections total. And because they're mixing LEDs, if these had all been blue or white or green, they wouldn't have been able to run 100 LEDs in series. But because the yellow LEDs are much lower voltage, they're about 2 volts, and so are the red LEDs, they can balance the number of LEDs to make up a voltage that is just below the 240 volts that they can drop a bit of current across a few resistors, but they, then they can run 100 LEDs in series. And that means that this 100 LED set actually only draws 15 milliamps, whereas the warm white set actually drew about 30 milliamps because it was two sections. This is just one section. And they really have, they, they've juggled the number of LEDs because by matching two volts and three volts, the small number three volt and the high number two volts, uh, they've managed to make the set operate at uh, 240 volts. But strangely, I suppose it makes sense really, they've only got about five resistors. Let me just check this. One, two, three. They've got five resistors in this set, but they're all in the green strings and always in the end of the, the green LED. And I guess that just makes sense that when they're manufacturing these in the factory, it's just always the green string just is the only one with a resistor in the end. And what they've uh, done here is the they've matched the voltage of the LEDs, they've used mostly the low voltage 2 volt. The yellows and the reds are the, the bulk of the LEDs in the set. They've matched it with a small number of blues and greens uh, to make up about 200 volts. And then they've dropped another, say, 50 volts, 40, 50 volts across uh, the five resistors. And it just means that uh, it's simpler. It means that this whole string runs at 50 milliamps. So technically speaking, you could put 100 of these strings on the same rectifier, but they don't actually say that. They still say just use 50 because they're trying to allow for the fact that people could get confused and uh, put, you know, the, the double strings on. But, uh, it's very interesting. I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth saying about this. Typically, the 24 volt ones will have seven or eight LEDs, depending on the power supply, in series with the resistor. So every uh, seven or eight LEDs, often you'll see if something's been damaged, if wind has really pulled at the uh, sections and damaged them, you might find that the most common failure is the, the wires getting damaged in the LEDs or the LEDs failing themselves and the going open circuit. But you'll often see that uh, in the low voltage sets, sections of just like seven or eight LEDs will go dim or they'll go out completely. With the uh, mains voltage sets, you'll uh, typically, if, if a set section does go out, you'll lose 50 or 100 LEDs in that section. So in a sense, the 24 volt doesn't just have the advantage. It, it has advantages and disadvantages. It has the advantage that less will go out when the string gets damaged, but it's also safer at low level, but it has the disadvantage that you can run less in series, typically just a couple of sections in series and one transformer, because you're limited by the capability of the transformer itself and also the higher current, uh, because the, there are much more circuits at 15 milliamps. But that's more or less it. That's about all I can think of saying about these. Um, it's worth noting, yeah, I, I mentioned that probably earlier on, don't let kids go up to municipal lights and touch them because the people that are installing them are installing the mains voltage ones down at ground level quite often, the event company type companies. And uh, a standard cheap, and they will go for the cheap AC Circuit breaker will not protect necessarily against the DC leakage because as soon as it goes through a bridge rectifier, it becomes DC and that can cause problems with RCDs not tripping properly. It should be an, it should be a type A RCD minimum used with something like this. But that is the typical construction of these. And now when you go up to municipal Christmas trees or you look up at the frames on the side of lamp posts and you look at the lights, you'll see they are this little plastic cap with the heat shrink, with the LED at the end, with that thick, rugged, rubbery cable that just lasts forever, honestly. This is so weather resilient, it's amazing. Um, and also, in the, in the, on the bigger Christmas trees, the, as the wind tugs and rips at the branches, because the, the rubber 
the cable is much thicker and it's made of rubber and it's got that extra strain relief. It actually tolerates, you know, quite violent weather and the larger Christmas trees a lot better. But this is typically what you see up there. And when you look up, you'll now recognize what they are. And these cost a fortune compared to the, the, the consumer ones. These are uh, much more expensive. I would say in the region of five times more expensive, maybe 10 times more expensive. But ultimately, the advantage with them is they're a lot safer. They're more rugged. In, in the commercial industry, they're much easier to install larger runs of them and they'll just last longer and that's kind of important in municipal lights. But there we go. Anatomy of municipal Christmas lights.